Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be working on another one of the British locomotives I picked up in a lot a few months ago. This is a 442 Atlantic locomotive, and out of all the locomotives in that lot, this one's probably one of the worst ones. I actually believe it was never run. I suspect it was a mantelpiece, because if you look at these cosmetic details, they're actually pretty good. Somebody clearly put some effort into it. However, in terms of making a running locomotive, it's terrible. You can see that there's paint all over the wheels. There's uh, actually paint on the motor. Uh, it's The drivers are all just bent completely out of shape. The front is bent in. So I think that somebody must have bought this thing as a kit or made it themselves just as some sort of a decoration, but never actually had the intention of using it. So we have an engine which maybe sat 40 years without riding the rails once in that entire time. So I figured today we're going to try to get it going again. When we tested this thing, the motor actually moved slightly, but it's far from being a runner. So today we're going to see if we can take this whole thing apart, correct a lot of the damage which has been done to it. And uh, if we're lucky, we might be able to get this thing going. I don't really know what's going to happen, but uh, I figure why not give it a chance. Now before we go working on this thing, I just want to quickly show you all what it's currently doing. It did move ever so slightly last time, but it is far from being a runner, and that's really not surprising with paint on the wheels. So we'll put some power in the track, and um, well, there's some smoke actually uh, coming out to the motor. And I'm not sure if you saw, but it actually did turn a little bit. So we know that power is capable of getting to the motor. The question is whether or not we can free this whole thing up well enough to actually run. Let's bring it back over to the workbench. So we're now going to attempt to disassemble this thing. I'm not really sure where to start, to be honest with all of you. You know, usually you'd find a screw up here which would hold the whole body together. But in this case, I'm really not seeing that. And uh, since it's such a customized locomotive, it's not inconceivable that maybe some things are glued together. I don't really know, but uh, I guess we'll just start removing some screws and hopefully we'll find something that will allow us to pull the entire drive out of this locomotive. I really would love to know the history on it. I mean, there's no way of finding it, but you gotta wonder if this actually was a working locomotive at some point, just because I don't know why somebody building a kit would bother to put a motor into it, and that doesn't really make a lot of sense. Anyways, it looks like there should be a screw there, but there's not, so this side of the frame is actually already loose. So I think we'll try disconnecting this, and since it's connected to the rest of it, hopefully it will all pop out. I don't know if this is gonna work or not. Alright, well, we managed to get that nut off. Oh, that's interesting. It feels like there's still something hanging on here. I don't quite know what. Oh, hey, there we go. Okay, I think all that paint was just preventing us from moving it. No, it's not the paint. They just put all the uh, little rivets right through the shell. So it's being held in by that. That's a very unique problem. Well, <laughs> here we are. Uh, this appears to be some sort of a Hornby trying drive. And, uh, you know, remarkably, the motor is not locked in place. As I like was saying earlier, there is some paint right on the armature there. So I'm not sure how that's going to affect things. There's paint on the brushes. I think we'll try to remove this just so that we can take it all apart because uh, this is all going to have to be uh, serviced, obviously. All right, so I think the first thing we should do is try to get this motor working properly. Now, it is turning over, so that's a good sign, but obviously there's way more to it that needs to work. So we'll take this off, and you can see that uh, things are pretty messed up on the commutator. Yeah, there we go. Using a fiberglass pencil, we'll see if we can polish up that commutator. I don't know how well it's going to uh, turn out, though. You know what, it might not be as bad as it looks. It seems to be coming out quite well so far. I'm really hoping that that's not a piece of the winding right there. That could be trouble. All right, well, that's looking half decent.
All right, well, I guess at this point, we'll try to find a power source and see if we can actually get this thing to turn over. I'm gonna be kind of surprised if the armature is still good, but uh, let's give it a chance. All right, everybody cross your fingers. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> yeah, let's not give up hope. Ooh. So those were really not the results I was hoping for. However, a lot of people have been asking me to get a voltmeter, and uh, I finally went and bought one. Now, um, apparently what you need to do is select for uh, continuity, and if they have continuity, it should mean that this is a good motor. I don't know if this is the correct way to do a test, but this is what I've been told, so uh, we'll try it out here. Hmm, so there seems to be continuity on one of the coils, but we're short on another. It's weird though, that motor was turning over when this engine was on the track and we didn't have high current draw, so I'm still kind of skeptical that that's the case. Let's try cleaning those gaps out a little more. So it's now a while later and I've concluded that unfortunately this armature is bad. I think that it was still turning over because it hadn't fully burnt up yet, but uh, something's gone wrong in the commutator. So I don't think this motor is going to work again. Now, uh, not all hope is lost. I'm going to try something which is pretty risky, and that's a rewind. I'm not very good at rewinding motors, but uh, I figure we'll try to get this one going again because I don't have any more X04 motors uh, in stock right now. So we'll take it apart and see if I can rebuild this thing. I, I don't have high hopes, but uh, it's worth a shot. All right, so we'll disassemble the motor here. Um, I believe this is the only thing holding it all together. Okay, we're gonna somehow have to pull the uh, worm gear here. This certainly is not ideal, but when you're dealing with something like this, which, you know, the other option is just to throw it out, you don't really have to worry if you mess it up more. Well, it's now a few days later. Unfortunately, I was not able to rewind the original motor as you saw. The windings were actually connected from the bottom of the plates on the commutator. I have no idea why they made it like that, but uh, it made trying to rewind that motor a lot more complicated. And I also did more damage to it trying to remove this part right here. But anyways, uh, there was actually a train show over the weekend and there was a guy selling a whole bunch of Hornby trying stuff and I was able to get my hands on another X04 motor. So I just uh, stuck the original uh, worm gear onto this and I think it should be a good fit now. So we'll try to put this back in this locomotive, get everything back together, and if we're lucky, we might just be able to get this locomotive going again. I'm still not optimistic about it, but uh, this has definitely given us a better chance. I, I can't believe I was able to find one of these. I guess we'll start off by uh, seeing if we can get this motor to fit in place. I believe this was the original motor mount screw, so we'll throw that in there. Oh yeah! Alright, well that seems pretty good. Let's maybe try just putting a little bit of weight on it. Yeah, that motor seems quite healthy. So that's terrific. Things are now back in the right direction again. So I think at this point what we'll do is we'll clean up the wheels, try to get all this paint and junk off of them. We'll clean up the drivers, everything else, and then we'll just try to reassemble everything. Well, those wheels are looking a little bit better than they did before. I figure I'll do all the other wheel sets too, just because I don't think that this paint could be doing any good, at least for stability. I don't know if this actually does pick up power or not, but uh, either way, we'll clean them up.
right, well, that's good. It doesn't seem to be binding, so uh, I guess at this point we can just uh, put the rest of it back together. So as you can see, the front of the locomotive is quite severely bent right here, and uh, you can see it's even cracked. This could be zinc pest. I don't really know what, but uh, I'm gonna try to bend it back into place. It might just snap off, but we'll try it anyway here. Oh, looks like that's actually straightened out quite well. Maybe somebody just dropped it on this corner. Yeah, it would kind of explain a lot. Anyways, let's, uh, let's see if we can get the rest of this whole thing back together. I've already gone ahead and trimmed all the little pieces of wire back, so I think that this should go in a little bit easier than it did before. Yeah, I'd say that that's a little bit better. All right, well, I think we've got this thing officially back together. I also added a nut right here just because before we did work on this thing, there wasn't actually anything holding this in place other than those pins. So why don't we take it over to the track and see if she'll run? All right, well, moment of truth. Let's see if this thing can ride the rails after being a mantelpiece for probably many decades. Get the tender all uh, set up here. I really don't know how this is going to go with those drivers, but uh, let's just give it some power here. And uh, it's turning over. Not doing a great job at picking up power though. Oh. It's trying to pull through. Oh yeah, come on. So I wouldn't exactly call those results good, but I've been looking this thing over and I discovered something which I think makes a little more sense. Yep, I uh, over torqued these screws a little bit. So basically the driving wheels which pick up the power are not sitting on the track. So it's just picking up power by its flanges. So we're just gonna loosen uh, both of these up a little bit. And uh, you can see right now, the locomotive is actually putting its weight on the driving wheels. So I'll grease and uh, oil everything up a little bit here. We'll take it back over and I think our results will be a little bit better this time. All right, let's take it back over to the track. All right, well, hopefully that will have sorted out all the bugs. A little bit of a funny problem, but uh, anyway, let's give it some power. Oh yeah, that's way better. Well, look at her go. Flanges are getting a little caught up, but I think we've got a runner. Yeah, okay. Flanges are definitely too big for uh, all of my switches. Yeah. Okay. Well, that is uh, absolutely awesome. Let's see if we got reverse. Yeah, reversing no problem. I think what I really need to do is just get this thing set up on some Hornby trying track like we did with the Davy Crockett. I just quickly went ahead and set up my circle of Hornby trying track and I think that this is going to work a lot better with this locomotive because this is basically what this would have been run on when it left the factory in the 50s or 60s. It's probably about the equivalent to Code 100 if there is such a thing but uh, it's really what uh, these older Hornby locomotives are suited for. I've also uh, modified the tender. I added on a wire tie coupler, very high quality. So we'll get that on there and we'll see if this uh, runs a little better than it did on my layout. <laughs> yeah, no problems. It seems to be pretty smooth. I mean, there's a little bit of wobble, but uh, this really is not that bad.
Well, folks, I think that that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. I'm thoroughly impressed with this thing. You know, at the beginning of this episode, I wasn't even sure if this thing would ever run again. This was definitely some sort of a decoration. And here it is, riding the rails for the first time in probably many years. Anyways, with that, I just want to thank you all so much for watching. Oh shoot, I lost a wheel. <laughs>